Greetings, all you fabulous grade fives out there. Good to have you with me for another lesson of maths. Uh, I'm Mr. Travis, Mr. T, and thanks to Worksheet Cloud for us to be able to bring these lessons to you. Uh, let's jump into our lesson. Uh, no more reminders at the start of the lesson. If you'd like to email me, perhaps you've got a subject or topic you want me to cover within maths, uh, it's grade five at worksheetcloud.com. And after the lesson, click on that link, do the worksheet, make sure that you've mastered what it is that we're covering today. As per normal, our second slide is going to be our mental arithmetic. Uh, these are the things we practice so that eventually um, we don't even really need to think about it. We get a question like 14 minus 6 and we'd like 8. Didn't think about it, it was just there in my head. Um, so we've got 10 questions, 40 seconds. Uh, the first goal is to be getting all of them right and if you're consistently getting 10 out of 10 then it's aiming to get them done quicker and quicker um yep your oh yes um, i've done subtraction today and we are crossing over a barrier so moving out of the 20s and into the 10s uh, crossing over the barriers like like the 20 mark or the 10 mark that's where um, lots of people make mistakes and so that's what we're practicing today so 40 seconds and your time starts now Time's up. Let's mark those quickly. Um, you will have noticed, or you may, I hope you noticed a certain pattern to these, um, but let's see. So, uh, 23 minus 7 is 16. Uh, 23 minus 17 is 6. So, noticing that with 10 extra over here in the thing that we're minusing, we've got the same number just before the 10. I don't know if that makes sense. Perhaps it will as we go. So the first one was 23 minus 7 is 16. 23 minus 17 is 6. 25 minus 8 is 17. 25 minus 18 is 7. 24 minus 9 is 15. 24 minus 19 is 5. 22 minus 6 is 16. 22 minus 16 is 6. 23 minus 5 is 18. 26. Oh. I think that I meant to make that 23 as well, but it doesn't matter. 26 minus 15 is 11. All right, if you missed any of those, just rewind the video and watch them again. I hope that you are improving, and if you're getting 10 out of 10s, then you're getting done quicker and quicker. This is the next thing that we do in each lesson. Uh, this one is slightly different um, in that you won't be able to start with the first line. Um, you'll need to start with one of the other lines um, in order to solve it. Anyway, I'll switch across to the whiteboard while you have a stab at this, and then I will work through with you. I'd suggest that you start with the line where the things that you're adding are the same. This one's a little bit more tricky than some of the other ones that we've done. Although there's no change in the size, there's you've got to work in a different order. Okay, so I think what I'll do is I'll work through it now. And if at any point you go, ah, oh, okay, that was the step I couldn't do. Or, oh, I think I've got it now. You just pause the video and you carry on from there. And when you're ready to carry on, you do so. So I would 
definitely say that the only line that you can really start with is this line over here. And that's because we know that two things that are the same come to a specific amount. And what I can see is that if two of these are the same and they equal two, then each of these is equal one. And now I can fill that in on each of the other slices of melon or whatever sweet that is. I'm not entirely sure. All right, so we've got a value of one, value of one, value of one, and a value of one. There are two options now in which line we can go to. Uh, you have to work them both out before you go to the, the, the one after that, but we can go to there or there next. Both of them we can work out now. I'm going to go to the top one first. So I've got 26 minus something equals one. So that's one of those ones that we've practiced where you've got to get one of the question ones, practice them a while ago. But um, you should be able to work out that 26 minus 25 is equal to one. All right, so we've now figured out what the lollipop is worth. So we can put a 25 over there and a 25 over there. With this multicolor, it's not quite so easy to see, but I hope you can see that's a 25. Okay, so now we're going to have to go to this line over here. That's the next one we can work out. Uh, now, interestingly, what we've got here is that this side has a number we've worked out, and then for the first, that's the first time we've had that where the answer's been, or the number that we know is now on the other side of the equal sign. Right, so what I can do is I can say, well, together one plus nine is 10. Now I've got two things that are the same that equal 10, uh, which means I share the 10 out between the two of them. And that means that this fish, which I think is one of those marshmallow fishes, is worth five. And now I can put the five in over here. And what that gives me now is the opportunity to finally work out what these jelly beans are over here, because I've got everything else I need in the top line. So I've got an answer number, it's 25. I've already got 10 of those 25, and I still need to get another 15. All right, so the jelly beans are equal 15. Now that I've got that, I can go 25 minus 15 is equal to 10. Right. I suppose that was what we practiced in the mental arithmetic, wasn't it? Going from in the 20s to potentially or below 10. Okay, so that was um, a little bit different from the ones that we've done in other lessons. But um, again, if you follow a sort of logical pattern of starting, where you've got things that are the same, and then working to to ones where you've always got one thing that you don't know, or one type of thing that you don't know, then you can work out. And eventually, if you follow sort of procedural, logical steps, you'll get there. So on to the topic for today, which is ratio, um, which is a, a new topic, I think, for some of you. Um, I think grade five is the first year where ratio is taught. It's probably something you've seen in real life, um, but probably not something that you really considered very much. Uh, so this is an introduction to ratio. So our goals for today, if I move myself across there, uh, understand the ratio, that uh, ratio is a relationship between two amounts. Know that ratio must be expressed in its simplest form. Uh, be able to use ratio to share out a given amount and be able to find uh, the one amount if the other is given. Uh, these things will make more sense as we work into our lesson. So where have we seen ratios? Uh, probably in a recipe, if you're somebody who spends some time in the kitchen. Um, perhaps you are making a cool drink. In fact, yes, definitely one of those mixer drinks. And it says something like uh, one part water to uh, ten parts Oh, sorry, one part cool drink to 10 parts water, uh, you will see it looks like one of these things with a colon in between. And what that means is you mix one measurement of the syrup with 10 measurements of the water, and then you get 11 altogether. Um, that's quite a, a sweet drink, 
Uh, anyway, if you mix more, it'll be sweeter. Uh, okay, so examples are 4 to 5, 10 to 7. Um, all right, scores, I suppose, are uh, a relationship between two different numbers. So sometimes, even if in cricket, for example, you have something like um, they have 185 runs for six wickets that's also a ratio it's a relationship between the two um, that's an example of a ratio as well um, this might be an example of a ratio of uh, girls and boys in a class so maybe your class has 14 boys and 15 girls then this would be a relationship of boys to girls in your class um, if you were making a cake and it said you needed to have one part water uh, or one part, um, yeah, let's just say water, one part water to three parts flour, which means that if you mix one cup of water, then you have to have three cups of flour. Uh, cement is actually mixed according to this. So one, uh, you mix one part cement. So let's say one kilogram of cement with three kilograms of sand, and that will give you a good cement mixture. Um, yeah, so these are just other examples of what ratios look like. So it's two numbers with a colon in the middle. You do sometimes get ones where you have three numbers, um, and that is also a relationship between three numbers. You won't do that in grade five, though. Um, but for example, if I think back to my cement one, if you're making concrete, and the difference between cement and concrete is concrete's the one with stones in it. Um, if you're mixing concrete, then it's one part cement, two parts stone, and three parts sand. So if you think again with a bucket, let's say we put one bucket of, it's a smallish bucket, one bucket of cement, two buckets of, of stones, and three buckets of sand, that'll give you a good mix for concrete. So ratios are in fact related to fractions. Um, like for example the the story of the boys and the girls uh okay i'll come back to that um let's say that i was doing my cement mixture uh, and i wanted to mix my cement if i think of these things together as in one plus three is four then one out of every four will be cement and three out of every four will be sand and if i think of the relationship of boys to girls in the class 14 out of the 29 are boys, 15 out of the 29 are girls. So this represents a fraction of the whole amount. So there you can see the fraction part is the numerator, and the whole amount, which is those two numbers added together, is the denominator, and the same on this side. And together, these two numbers add to 29. Now it is important uh, the order we say it. So if, for example, I said the class has 14 boys and 15 girls, then boys came first, then we write the boys number first. So the ratio of boys to girls is 14 to 15, as I said the word boys first. But if I'd asked for the ratio of girls to boys, then I must put the girls number first, and then my ratio will be 15 to 14. And we say the word two when we um, talk, when we cross over the colon, so 15 to 14. Okay, so the order we say it is the order we write it down. So we can change the numbers without changing the ratio. Uh, for example, if we're making pizza dough, I think I made pizza dough yesterday. Uh, if we're making pizza dough, then the ratio of cups of flour to cups of water is 5 to 2. In other words, when I, make, when I put in 5 cups of flour, uh, then in, this should be the word flour, whoopsie, um, that should be the word flour, not water, oops, let's quickly change, amazing, just like that it says flour, uh, so then for every five cups of flour you need two cups of water, that is actually the measurement, and the only other ingredients are salt, and a little bit of salt, and some yeast, um, okay, so, uh, what happens if I had a pizza party, and I wanted to make lots of pizza, I need to make more, um, so what I can do is I'm going to make twice as much. I'm going to double everything. So now instead of five cups of water, I'm going to double that. And Sorry, of flour, I'm going to use ten cups of flour. And instead of two cups of water, I'm going to use four cups of water. But really what I've just done is take two sets of everything and put it together. All right, and that gives me a ratio of ten to four. 
Um, but I've just doubled both amounts. And what this shows us is that the ratio of five to two is the same as the ratio, pardon me, 10 to four. Um, and we'll go through how you go about um, changing one to the other um, on the whiteboard. So as long as you do the same things to both sides, uh, the ratio doesn't change. Uh, we always write the ratios in their simplest form. Let me go to the whiteboard and explain to you what I mean by that. All right, I'll come back to that in what's written there in a moment. Uh, but what I wanted to just share with you was if we looked at our pizza dough and our ratio, our original ratio was five cups of flour to two cups of water. What I've done over here is to get from five to 10, I've doubled. And to get from two to four, I've doubled. Oh, I'm off the top of the screen. Ah, how annoying. Okay, so what I was saying is that we, our original pizza dough res, or recipe had two, five cups of flour to two cups of water. And when I wanted to find out how, many, how much I must put in when I wanted twice as much, then I doubled both. So I doubled the flour and I doubled the water. So if I add these two together here, I had seven cups of ingredients. And if I added these two together, I had 14. And you'll also notice that to get from seven to 14, I was doubling as well. So whatever you do to the one, you do to the other. And it also doubles the total. And this allows us to work out quite a few different things. Anyway, before we get to working out those things, let's have a look at this marble story that I've got written down here. And we'll just practice understanding how do we write down the ratio. So if I wanted to find out what is the ratio of, and I've got a bag of marbles, I've got um, six blue, five green, eight red, and three yellow. And I wanted to find out, for example, the ratio of blue to red. All right, so what, what I'm gonna write down is the numbers of each. So I've got six blue, and I've got eight red. Okay, if I had asked you to what the ratio of red to blue was, I'm not going to keep changing colors, it's going to take too long. If I was asking the ratio of red to blue, then we would put red's number first, and then it would be like that, eight to six. If I asked you what was the ratio of green, sorry, of yellow to green, what do you think the ratio would be? So the ratio of yellow to green. Well, we write it down in the order that it comes. So yellow to green would be five to three. If it was green to yellow, be five to three. So three to five and five to three. So whichever way you say it is the way you write it down. I could then ask you the question like, what is the ratio of green marbles to other marbles? So the ratio of green marbles to other marbles. So that means all the others go in the same group. So green came first, O for other. So let's work out, well, green we don't have to work out, it's already written down. So the ratio, green to other. So now for other, I've got to add together those three amounts. So six plus eight is 14, plus three is 17. Then my ratio is five to 17. Now there was an important point that, we, that I made on the last slide before we came across the whiteboard, and that was that we should express our ratio as the simplest possible form. And to do that, uh, in fact, let me come back to this. I'm gonna slide across and do a different example. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna talk about a bag of sweets that you and your younger sibling are sharing out. So let's say um, you have a bag of jelly tots. And you decide because you're older that you get three jelly tots for every two jelly tots that your uh, younger sibling gets. Let's say it's your younger brother. All right, so you're going to share these jelly tots out in a ratio of three to two. These are the ones that go to you, and these are the ones that go to your brother. Right, so that means that for every five, 
three of them go to you and two of them go to your brother. So for every five, three go to you and two go to your brother. I might say, I might ask if there were 10, how many would go to each of you? Well, that's the same. Uh, just there's two groups of five. So first you give yourself three and then you give yourself another three, which is six. And your brother, you give first two and then another two, which is four. All right, so six to four. If you had 15, you'd share them out. So three groups of five. So three groups of three would give you nine and your brother would get six. All right, so each time we're doing this, we're sharing it out in the same way. But now what's important is that we want to represent our numbers in the simplest possible ratio. So let's say we've got a really big bag of jelly tots and we want to share them out. Instead of saying, well, we've got to give, like for every uh, 30 we give to me, we're going to give 20 to my brother. And then the next day you get a small bag of jelly tots and you don't know how to share it out because there's not that many in the bag. So then for this one, you're going to do it in a, in a, you're going to put it in its simplest form. And this one is its simplest form. All right. Now this one over here is the same ratio, but how would I get from this one into the simplest form? And it's sort of like simplifying a fraction. I ask myself, what can fit into six and into four? And I see that the biggest number that can fit into both of them is two. And two goes into this, into six three times, and two goes into four twice. And now you can see I've simplified my ratio to three over two. For this one, I'd ask myself, what's the smaller, what's the biggest number that can fit into both of them? I noticed that three can fit into both of them. Three goes into there, three into nine three times, three goes into six twice. And again, I've come back to my simplest ratio. Let's have a quick look across at our marble story that was over here. If we look at the one on the left hand side, the one with the red and the blue marbles. So let's look at the red and blue marbles. Ask yourself, what can go into both of these? Well, I noticed that two goes into both of those and two goes into there four times and into there three times. So the ratio of blue marbles to red marbles is four to three. These two, there's nothing that can simplify. So nothing can go into both of those. So that ratio will stay the same. And likewise, that ratio, nothing can go into both of them. And so it will stay the same. But right, I'm going to put some practical examples on and we're going to make them into their simplest form. So just four of these. Um, I want to just make these into their simplest form. So if I look at 50 and 40, I've got to find something that goes into both of those. Again, one of those moments when knowing your divisibility rules will help you. Um, that was a lesson that we've done as well. So you can always refer back to the lesson on um, uh, divisibility rules if you want to check that. But I noticed both of them end in zero. So that means 10 goes into both of those. 10 goes into there five times. 10 goes into there four times. And so that is what I've done. I've divided each of these by 10. So 10 went into uh, 55 times, 10 went to 44 um, times, and then my simplest ratio is 5 to 4. If I look at number 2, I'm looking for a number that fits into both of these. You might have found 2, you might have found 4, you might have found 8. Uh, each of those fits into it. Um, I'll go through each of them, but I always go with the biggest one. 8 goes into 16. Oh, sorry. 8 goes into 16 twice, 8 goes into 8 once, and your proper ratio is 2 to 1. Uh, if you had said, for example, 4, so you wanted to know 4 goes into 16 4 times, 4 goes into 8 twice, you would have ended up with 4 to 2, and then you might notice that actually 2 goes into there as well, 2 goes into there twice and into there once, and so you see you end up coming back to the same answer. So find the biggest thing that goes into both. But if you do it in two steps, that's also fine, as long as you make sure to do all the steps until you can't go any further. 
what can go into both of these? Again, if you know your divisibility rules, the fact that we have a five and a zero means five goes into both of them. Five goes into 15 three times, five goes into 24 times, and my simplified ratio is five to four. Last one of this set, I'm looking for a number that goes into 16 and six. I notice that two goes into both, two goes into there three times, two goes into there eight times, and that's as many as fit, and there's your simplified ratio. Okay, the next step is to the next step in our progression with um, ratio is when you've been given um, a total and a ratio, and you need to find out how, how much each person gets. That's what we're going to practice now. Okay, so let's look at the first one. Uh, we've got 15 things, and we want to share them in a ratio of 1 to 2. So how do we go about that? Well, first of all, we need to find out out of every how much do we share it into the ratio. So if I add these two together, I will see that I get 3. Now I want to ask, how many times does 3 go into 15? 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. It goes in 5 times. So what I've really got is 5 groups of three things that need to be shared out in this way. So if I go, now that I've worked out that there are five groups, I go five times each of them. So five times one is five, five times 10 is two. And if I wanna check that, I can see that five plus 10 gives me 15. So there we go. I've solved that when I had 15 things shared out in a ratio of one to two, then I will get a five on one side and 10 on the other. All right. I'll give you a practical example with the next one. Let's say that I was mixing uh, paint. So I'm doing a painting and I'm mixing red and white to get sort of a pinky color, but I want quite a dark pinky color. All right, and so that's what I've got. So I'm, let's change things to be milliliters. All right, so I've got 40 milliliters of paint, and I want to know how much red and how much white must I put in. So red and white. All right, well, they're in a ratio of 5 to 3. So 5 and 3 together is 8. How many times does 8 go into 40? 8, 16, 24, 32, 40. So now that I've got 40 moles of paint mixed in a ratio of 5 to 3, I want to know how many moles of red paint I must put in and how many moles of white paint. So I know I've got eight groups to get in. So eight, I went in, sorry, the eight went into there five times. So five times five is 25. So that means I must put in 25 moles of red paint. And five times three is 15. And if I add these two numbers together, I can double check that I get 40, which I do. So if I need to, if I've been told that to get the right color pink, I must mix five parts red with three parts white, but I need a total of 40 moles of paint, then what I'm going to do is say, well, that goes in there, um, five times five times five is 25, that's that one there, five times three is 15, now I've got 40 moles of paint that is exactly the right color. Perhaps in number three, I'm talking about the ratio of girls to boys in a class, so for every Three, every four girls, there are three boys in the class. That doesn't mean that there are only seven in the class. That just means that for every four girls, there are three boys. So girls and boys. So I now know that I've got 35 in the class, and I want to find out what's the total number of girls and what's the total number of boys. Okay, so start off by adding the two together. I get seven. So for every seven, four are boys and three are girls. How many times does 7 go into 35? 7, 14, 21, 28, 35. It goes in 5 times. So in total, 5 times 4 gives me 20. There are 20 girls. 5 times 3 is 15. And 15 boys. So in a ratio of 4 to 3, with 35 children in the class, I will have 20 girls and 15 boys. If I add those together, you'll see you get 35. Last one. What can we make this about? 
Uh, okay, so let's make this a mixed drink. Mix one part of the drink with three parts of water to get um, what you're looking for. Uh, the the drink the drink with the correct ratio, the the right taste. Okay, so let's say that we wanted to. Um, this is a bit ridiculous, but we wanted 16 liters of cool drink, and we were told that we need to mix it in a ratio of one liter of cool drink. Oh, sorry, of, let's call that concentrate. One liter of concentrate to three liters of water. That's how you need to mix it. So first up, I'm going to add the two together. One plus three is four. So for every four liters, one must be concentrate and three must be water. So how, how many times does four fit into 16? It goes in four times. So then four times one is four. So I'm going to have to put in four liters of concentrate and how many liters of water four times three is 12 if i add those together i get 16 which is just a check to see if you've got it right so that means that i've got if i need to make 16 liters of cool drink i need to mix four liters of concentrate with 12 liters of water i hope that sort of makes sense in terms of a, a few practical things with um convert with um ratio uh, and what we're going to look at in a future lesson is uh, actually using these with actual problems and, and working around solving sorts of things with uh, ratio. All right, so this has been the introduction to ratio. Um, just looking at the basics, uh, what, how do we share it out? How do we um, simplify the ratio into its simplest form? And the next step is to then work with ratio as, as a practical thing. So it's been a little bit of a long lesson with not very much practical. But if you do the worksheet, then you'll get your practice. And hopefully you'll be um, on top of ratio and able to manipulate it as you see. Just a reminder, if you want to email me to cover a topic, anything like that, it's grade5 at worksheetcloud.com. I'm Mr. T. It's been fab having you with me. Have an awesome day, grade fives.